tell us a little bit about the the album that you guys have been able to put together and what people can expect to hear on that album uh yeah look it's, it's our third album we're really happy with the way it went um and I, I suppose what to expect is there's, there's definitely similarities between this one and, and our previous two. I feel all three of our records work pretty well and, and are reasonably cohesive, but there's enough differences in each one to know you're listening to a, a, a new record. So um, we kind of spent... We, we were lucky enough to be able to spend quite a bit of time on it because we assumed we'd be touring the last record overseas and that didn't eventuate. So we just sort of holed up in the rehearsal space and had a bit more time to, to really focus on getting a, a good follow-up. So do you feel that having that time when you weren't going overseas, that actually gave you more time to sit down and be a little bit more creative? Oh, look, I think so, but... Um, I, we're, because we're a bit older, when we got the band together, we wrote the first album in six months, and we sort of said, at our age, I don't want to be sort of, you know, spending three, four years between albums. I said that we should really be looking to, to work hard and, and sort of put albums out sort of more regularly. So we've only been going six years. So to have three albums in six years is probably a little bit unusual in, in this day and age, but it, it, it works for us. Yeah. So what kind of themes were you guys looking at when you actually sat down to, to write the lyrics for this album? Well, look, that's um, Marcus's domain. So Marcus is the, the singer-guitarist in the band. Um, now, Tony, our bass player, comes up with a lot of sort of concepts and, and titles and whatnot, but Marcus is, is the... Is the lyricist so he's you know got a you know a lot of interest in hermeticism you know he was a, a member of the oto and a lot of this stuff that i don't really know a great deal about but he's he's really into carl jung and and alistair crowley and a lot of that sort of stuff so for him you know he's into ancient egypt and, and a whole bunch of other other things the gods and goddesses of, of ancient egypt so he sort of pulls all of that sort of stuff which for him he feels is like a um you know, it's sort of, it's a personal sort of thing for him, but he sort of writes the lyrics in a way that kind of, um, you know, anyone can interpret whatever they like into them. But he's, he's a very clever lyricist, and I think um, if you read through the lyrics on, on all of the albums, but this one especially, I think he, he definitely has sort of a, a unique sort of spin on things. So for yourself personally, do you feel like you get a little bit of an education when you sit down and read through his lyrics? Uh, oh, look, you get a bit of an education if you sit down and talk to him. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's a lot of the time he's quite, you know, well-read and, and has some amazing sort of, um, you know, insight into sort of history and whatever. So I'm, I'm constantly sort of uh, <laughs> learning lots when Marky goes into one of his kind of um, discussions on, on, on a particular subject. So, yeah, he's got a very interesting fellow to sit down and talk to. Yeah. You mentioned before about the overseas touring not happening. Is that something... Something that you guys are looking to do in the future to be able to head overseas and spread your music to a wider audience? Oh, look, most definitely. I think for us, that's the next step that we really want to take. Uh, I thought we were ready um, on the last album just because of, uh, you know, having a, a very good label behind us like Rise Above. So I think we were ready and um, more than experienced enough because we're old and played in lots of other bands. We felt that we were, you know, ready to kind of get over to Europe and the US and, and show them what we were made of. But for whatever reason, it, it, it didn't happen. Uh, and I'm not so worried about that because I just sort of think it'll happen when it happens. And the longer it takes, probably the more chance there is of, of having uh, more people that know of us to come and check us out, you know? Yeah. Now, while a lot of us have been in lockdown, you've been able to put together some special shows at the basement, I understand. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, look, that was brilliant. Um, we know the guys that uh, run the, that own and run the basement quite well. Canberra's a small place. And uh, they came to us with the idea um, because at that time the limits were only 10 people per show. They had to be seated and they had to be given food so he just so he rang us and said look would you be interested in doing a show you know what i mean where all the food and grog and the show is provided um and i said look i think it's a great idea but i knew that they were going to lose a lot of money doing all of that work for one show so i suggested you know doing two shows in the one on, on the saturday instead and then there was just more interest than we thought so we, we did a couple of shows on the sunday all of those shows um 
you know, yep. were, were sort of sold out, so to speak. So it meant that they would have been able to generate enough money to, um, you know, to cover all of their costs with staff and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, it was a really... It was a really useful. Well, it was look, we had a great time. We got to play through the full. Uh, they have a fantastic PA and, and lighting show in there, so we got to f- play four full production shows uh, within within a weekend. So it was great to sort of get get up on stage again and sort of belt out the new ones live. You know. Yeah, definitely. And how did that feel for you guys playing in front of such a small audience? Because I've spoken to a few musos who have tried to do live streams during the lockdown and they've just said it just didn't work for them because they didn't get that vibe and that energy from the crowd. How did it feel for you guys playing in front of an audience of 10 people? Yeah, look, to be honest, I thought it might have been odd, but every single one of the shows felt exactly like a gig. So although that in between the songs, you know, there was, you know, quite, you know, or, you know, there was applause, but obviously with 10 people, there's only so much noise that you hear, but there was a real sort of um, energy in the room where everyone was just really thankful to, to be able to have a beer and watch a band in public again. And obviously the people knew that it was a good way to, to, to assist um, the industry and not so much us for us it was way more about actually donating as much of our time as possible to the basement you know what I mean so so in the end it was you know it, it was just something that none no one sort of made uh, a heap of money out of it but nobody lost either and all the punters said that it was totally worthwhile and they had a really really good time so we had nothing but really positive feedback yeah definitely so moving forward for you guys now what are the plans for the future like i don't know what the um, rules and regulations are are in canberra at the moment i know here in victoria they're saying that live music might be a little way off yet but what are your plans in uh, for the future well we're pretty lucky we've already um, booked our launch show at the basement for the 25th of july because apparently late june canberra moves to a hundred capacity okay so now the basement's a much bigger room than that however um 100 is 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 a decent enough sort of size for us to 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 make it you know yeah to make it sort of coming back to to playing live so that's booked in and that's the only show we have booked in at the moment but obviously as soon as every other state opens up we're we're hoping to sort of book shows as soon as you're allowed to have a hundred at a venue so um yeah it feels good to us that we've got we've got a uh, a show booked you know in about seven weeks from now so yeah it's uh, hopefully gonna you know at least feel like we're getting back to normality a little bit definitely and you guys supported the basement with this show but how can your fans support you guys at the moment while you can't get out there and and make a little bit of money from live shows Oh, look, there was a little bit of money at the end of the basement shows for us, like, um, so we were sort of grateful for that, like, we we mentioned that we were happy to do it for nothing, but I think there was a little bit after four shows that came in, but, look, to be honest, um, for us, it's like, if people want to purchase the new album, uh, or you can get our our merch through Bandcamp, or just go to witchgold.com, which gives you links to all that sort of stuff, so people are welcome to do that, um, for us, it's not as much of an issue for a lot of bands that make a living out of it, you know what I mean? For yeah. us, um, you know, it's, it's not something where we're financial, in any financial sort of issues, but, but it affects us with, you know, the fact that we should be, you know, touring a new album and we're not, you know what I mean? So um, if people uh, are interested, they can, yeah, check out witchgirl.com and um, there's links to merch there if they're interested. Definitely. Well, Joel, I guess to finish up, is there anything you would like to say to people out there before they go out and grab a copy of the brand new album to check it out? Uh, look, I'd just like to say, um, you know, the whole industry in Australia and the world and worldwide is, is really suffering. Uh, we want to support our local uh, venues and industry as much as possible because without them, there's nothing. So um, if people could sort of, you know, keep that in mind, um, I think we'll be in a better place. So, um, yeah, any support for the local industry is, is really, really um, appreciated by all of us. So, um, yeah, check out the album, see what you think, and I uh, hope to see you guys on the road before too long. Definitely. All right, mate. Well, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. No, yeah, me too, Dave. Thanks so much.